This is group B33, and today we'll be giving our presentation on Hall's theorem. To watch this video and other videos on discrete mathematics, please visit www.noadam.com. That's www.knoatom.com. To begin this presentation, we'll just give you a brief overview of what we aim to cover. We'll start off with the concept of a bipartite graph. After learning what a bipartite graph is, we can move on to the concept of a complete matching. Both of these topics are essential for understanding Hall's theorem, so after we've covered them, we can give an actual proof of Hall's theorem, followed by some examples. To begin our discussion of bipartite graphs, we'll start off with the definition. A graph G is bipartite if its vertex set can be partitioned into two disjoint vertex sets, U and V, such that every edge in the graph contains a vertex in U and a vertex in V. But what does this really mean? We know that any graph is made up of a set of vertices and a set of edges. If the vertices have the property, they can be split up into two sets, such that the vertices in U aren't also in the set V, we know that the sets of vertices are disjoint. If the edges have the property that for every edge, if it has a vertex in U, its other vertex is in V, then this graph is called bipartite. Just to clarify this a little further, this means that no edge can have both an initial and terminal vertex in U or an initial and terminal vertex in V. The discussion of bipartite graphs on the last slide was a little bit technical, so on this slide we'll introduce another method to determine whether or not a graph is bipartite. We know that if a graph is bipartite, it is also two colorable. By definition, a graph is two colorable if it is possible to assign two different colors to its vertices so that no two adjacent vertices are assigned the same color. Recall that two vertices are adjacent if there is an edge connecting those two vertices. Now let's take the graph on the right as an example. We see that there are two blue vertices and two red vertices. Since the red vertices are only adjacent to blue vertices, and the blue vertices are only adjacent to red vertices, the graph is two colorable and therefore bipartite. The technique we've just described is really useful when you have a graph that is more complex and it's not readily apparent how to divide that graph into two sets of vertices. You can just think of assigning two different colors to the vertices and seeing if the graph is two colorable. Now that we've discussed the concept of a bipartite graph, we can talk about the concept of a matching. By definition, a matching of a bipartite graph is a subset of the set E of edges such that no two edges are incident with the same vertex. We will now give an example of matching to help make this concept a little bit more clear. As you now know, the graph on the left is an example of a bipartite graph. We can identify this graph as such by using two methods. The first of these is using the definition of a bipartite graph or we can note that the graph is too colorable. We now turn our attention to the graph on the right. This graph is an example of a matching that was obtained from the bipartite graph on the left. To obtain the matching from the bipartite graph, we removed a number of edges until each vertex in the, in the graph on the right has at most one edge incident with it. The key concept to note here is that in the graph on the right, the bottom two red vertices have no edges incident with them. This is fine, as long as the other vertices have at most one edge incident with them. Now that we know what a matching is, we can talk about a more specific type of matching, a complete matching. By definition, a complete matching is one in which every vertex has only one in edge incident to it. It's important to note that a complete matching may also be called a perfect matching. You'll notice that the graph on the left is the exact same as the graph we used in the previous slides to illustrate the concept of a matching. The graph on the right is a perfect matching because every vertex in the graph has one edge incident to it. You'll notice that the graph on the left is not a perfect matching because the bottom two red vertices have no edges incident to them. Now that we've covered the concepts of a bipartite graph and a complete matching, we're ready to discuss Hall's theorem. 
What Hall's theorem does is it provides a set of necessary and sufficient conditions for the existence of a complete matching. The definition of Hall's theorem is as follows. The bipartite graph G with vertex set V and edge set E with disjoint vertex sets V sub 1 and V sub 2 has a complete matching from V sub 1 to V sub 2 if and only if the cardinality of N of A is greater than or equal to the cardinality of A for all subsets A of V1. The definition of Hall's theorem that we introduced in the previous slide is undoubtedly a little bit technical. So now we're just going to step through the theorem piece by piece to give you a better understanding of what each part means. To start off, we say that we have a graph G. Just as with any graph, we know that this graph must have a set of vertices, V, and a set of edges, which we've called E. Since Hall's theorem calls for the graph being bipartite, we know that we can partition its vertex set, V, into two disjoint sets, which we've called V sub 1 and V sub 2. Now, since Hall's theorem is trying to prove whether or not a bipartite graph has a complete matching, this next step is essential. Hall's theorem says that we know every vertex has one instant edge, a complete matching, if and only if the cardinality of N of A is greater than or equal to the cardinality of A. Continuing on with the notation used in Hall's theorem, we'll next address this particular piece of notation, which we've highlighted here. Recall from what we know from set theory that this is read as the cardinality of set A. If we say that set A is a set with n elements, we read this notation as n is the cardinality of A. We can extend this to the term n of A, saying that the cardinality of n of A is the number of neighbors or adjacent vertices to the vertices in set A. Therefore, the statement, the cardinality of n of A is greater than the cardinality of A, says that for a graph to be complete, the number of vertices adjacent to the vertices in the set A must be greater than or equal to the number of vertices in set A. It is important to note that the set A can be any size subset of the vertex set V1. Since this is perhaps the most confusing notation in Hall's theorem, we'll give a brief example of it here. The graph below was introduced earlier, and we know that it is a complete bipartite graph. We'll let the vertex set on the left be V1, and the vertex set on the right be V2. Since the set A can be any size subset of V1, let's choose that the set A is all four vertices of V1. Therefore, the cardinality of A is 4. Since each vertex on the left is connected to exactly one vertex on the right, it follows that the cardinality of N of A is also 4. Since it can be shown that for every size subset A, the cardinality of N of A is greater than or equal to A, it follows that this graph is a complete bipartite graph by Hall's theorem. Now that we have a solid understanding of Hall's theorem, let's do an example. The example we're going to give here is known as the dancing problem. Suppose that we are at a dance where there are four boys and four girls. Given the following information, we want to use Hall's theorem to prove that every person at the dance will be able to find a partner. The information that we need is as follows. Suppose that the four boys are named Ryan, Greg, Tim, and Mike. Each boy is willing to dance with any girl that is willing to dance with him. The four girls are Emily, Jen, Claire, and Katie. And unlike the boys, they're a little bit more selective. Emily is willing to dance with Greg and Tim. Jen is willing to dance only with Greg. Claire is willing to dance with Ryan, Mike, and Tim. And Katie is willing to dance with Mike and Greg. To begin solving this problem, Let's represent the possibilities for dance partners using a bipartite graph. We can represent each person with a vertex, and we'll see that we'll have two disjoint vertex sets, one for the set of girls and another for the set of boys. Let's let an edge between two vertices, A and B, mean that girl A is willing to dance with boy B. It follows that this graph will be bipartite because we'll have two disjoint vertex sets and there will never be an edge connecting two boys or two girls. That is, no two boys are going to want to dance with one another, and no two girls are going to want to dance with one another. Using the information presented in the last few slides, we're able to construct a bipartite graph that models the possible dance pairings. This graph is shown here. 
We now wish to use Hall's theorem to decide if there exists a complete matching between the set of boys and the set of girls, such that every person has a dance partner. If you recall, Hall's theorem calls for selecting a subset, A, of the vertex set V1. In this particular case, we've chosen the two vertices in the red box. Hall's theorem says that a complete matching exists if for every subset A of the vertex set V1, the number of edges adjacent to the vertices in A are no greater than the number of vertices in A. So as you'll see here, we have these two vertices, the vertex that represents Emily and the vertex that represents Jen. And if we look at our graph, we see that the number of vertices adjacent to these two vertices is 3. Therefore, Hall's theorem holds for this particular subset. Due to time constraints, we aren't able to go through every size subset of the vertex set V1. However, if you take the time to verify this for yourself, you'll realize that the bipartite graph does indeed have a complete matching. This means that there is a configuration in which every person has a dance partner. That particular configuration is represented by the bipartite graph here. Thanks for watching this video on Hall's theorem. As a quick reminder, to view this video and other videos on discrete math, please visit www.noadam.com. Thanks.